This video brought to you by ozfence.store. What is up everybody? Joe Everest, the fence expert. Today I'm talking about the five things I would do to market my business if I were to restart tomorrow. And if you stick around to the end, I've got a bonus just for you. That being said, Let's dig into it. All right, guys, in a previous video, I talked about the five things I would do if I were starting my business tomorrow in the fencing industry. And one of those points was advertising, marketing, what I would do to market my business, which got me to thinking we could probably do a video all on its own of the top five things I would do if I were marketing my business. And here we are. To see that video, it's probably linked above here somewhere on how I would start a business. But if you've started a business and you're looking for a way to advertise, or if you have an established business and you're just picking up pointers on how to find more business, this video is probably for you. The first thing I would do, arguably the most cost effective thing because it's free, would be start creating Facebook posts. We talked about this a little bit in the last video. Uh, one, I would create a business page for my new business. I see guys try to do it on personal pages. It gets a little bit weird because you're adding people as friends, which seems awkward for me to be a friend with a company. A business account is free, just like a personal account, but you can typically do more things with it. You can also add like a contact us button that will go to an email, or you can do a call us button that will go to your phone number. Create that business account first, and then start researching all the Facebook groups in your area. Now we're in Springfield, Missouri, so we have Sites like I Love Springfield, uh, What's Going On in Republic. There's lots of these pages in our area. Research your area to find all of them and just start posting in them. And follow them because likely at least once a day in any of these groups, there's typically a who builds fence in the area, who repairs fence in the area, who can help me fix a fence, all of these things, specifically after storms come through. Now, storm season is going to range depending on what part of the country you're in, but there's typically these posts so find and join these pages with your business account and check in on them on a daily basis to add your name into the likely list of names that find themselves in the comment section of these. Now, a thing about Facebook is, like I said, it's free for all. So generally, there is a lot of competition. There's no barrier of entry, but it is the place I would start because, again, it's free. The second thing I would do would be to create a door hanger. Now, there's a variety of these door hangers. You can print some up at home. You can take them to a print shop to have professional looking uh, door hangers that have the pre-cut holes that'll hang on the doors. But a door hanger just saying, hey, you know, here's our company, here's who I am. Uh, we'd love to do business in your neighborhood. Or what we do is when we're doing business in the neighborhood, we'll go hang door hangers up saying, hey, we're here in the neighborhood. We're sorry if we get in your way. We're sorry if we make too much noise. We'll be out of your hair in no time. Uh, by the way, since we're doing work in your neighborhood, stop by, check it out. If you have any questions, give us a call. You can do a version of that, or you could simply do an introductory. Here's who I am. Here's my company. We're new to the area. We'd love to meet you. If you have any fencing needs, or if you know anyone with fencing needs, we'd love to uh, meet with them as well. Now, an important point here is you need to research if your community or the community that you're going to hang these in requires a solicitor's license. In our market, our city does require a solicitor's license to even approach a front door. Some markets are different. In a community near ours, you can approach a front door and hang it, but you cannot knock without the solicitor's license. Go ahead, get the license. I think it's all of $25 in our area. Uh, you register with the city and then you're issued a license number and you're good to go. Make sure that you're crossing your T's and you're dotting your I's so that if someone were to have a question, you've already got that figured out. One thing you don't want to do is start off your business on the wrong foot by running afoul of your local government that you're trying to do work in their community. Step four, a lot like step three would be, you could even take the same door hanger and make flyers out of it. And you, of course, you could switch these if you'd like to. I think door hangers are more effective than flyers, which is why I put them in the number two slot. Now we're talking cafes typically let you hang them up, uh, you know, any sort of breakfast spot, coffee spots, lunch spots. They typically have, at least in our community, they have some sort of cork board. It might be in the front, might be in the back, but where you can hang, you know, any of these flyers, you can even do the classic, uh, put your phone number on the bottom with tear outs. That way someone could take the number with them if they wanted to. Uh, sometimes local supply houses, uh, for example, Menards will let uh, contractors put business cards in their uh, case if they buy materials from them. Figure out where the attention is in your market and put a flyer there. Another spot that comes to mind, at least in ours, is our local gas stations. Uh, there's one brand in particular that has a cork board backed by the bathrooms. Again, 
great free place to put a flyer. The flyers are gonna cost money. Sure, you can always print them off at home. The more professional, the better on that maybe. Uh, taking them to the print shop might be a better solution, but paper your community with these flyers. Now, when I say spread them through the community, what I don't mean is put them under the windshield wipers of everyone at the mall, at the supermarket, wherever. Put them out where people can find them if they're interested, but you don't want the image of being someone that is uh, maybe providing a lot of trash for the community, that these things are found blowing around and somebody's gotta clean them up. You get a little bit of press from that, but it might not be the most positive kind. Find the attention, put it up in a respectable place, Always ask permission before you hang it up, but another great way, low cost way of getting your name into the community. All right, the fourth way, this might cost a little bit more money, but I believe it's worth it, is find a networking group or a series of networking groups in your community. In our community, there's BNI networks that are coast to coast. You likely have several in your community. Now find one that's somewhat trade related or at least has several related trades, uh, landscaping, etc. A lot of them are gonna have finance folks in it, which are fine. You're gonna have mortgage lenders. It's always great to know some of those. They all have realtors. Again, great to know a realtor, but find some that also have related services. Like I said, uh, some sort of landscaping contractor, irrigation contractors are great people to know, uh, but find a network event. They typically meet once a week. The ones here in town, there's some that meet in the breakfast hour, there's some that meet in the lunch hour, usually an hour, one to two hours a week, but that could really pay dividends if you're trying to get your name established in the community to meet these folks who may already be established in the community, or in the case of you know mortgage loan officers or real estate agents, they know the people that are looking for your services. It makes sense to take them to coffee once in a while, have lunch with them at these networking events. Get to know the people that already know your potential clients. The fifth thing I would do is also free, but it's further down the list because it's less effective probably, but it would be cold calling related services. For fencing, I would be reaching out to uh, landscape companies, hardscape companies, those two are typically different. Um, sod companies, people that are laying sod in these new home builds, they also typically do irrigation. Sometimes those are separate. Anyone who is working in or around the house, exterior remodelers are a great source as well. Reaching out to them, hey, my name is so-and-so with so-and-so building company or so-and-so fencing company. I build fences in your area. I'd love to get to know you. I'd love to stop by and introduce myself possibly take you out to coffee or lunch if you're available, and just see if there's any need in your business that I could fill. It makes sense for us to know each other because you know folks that I would love to know, I will likely come to know people that you would love to know, less trade business. You'll get a lot of no's, but the yeses you do receive will become very valuable. It's still on the top five things I would do to advertise myself if I were starting a fence company tomorrow. All right, guys, I promised you a bonus tip of what I would do to market myself if I were starting my fence company tomorrow, and that is EDDM. Now, EDDM stands for Every Door Direct Mailer, or mailing, depending on what you Google. Now, be careful when you Google that, but EDDM. Now, what this is, is it's typically a postcard, and depending on what service you go with, they're different sizes but it sends a postcard to every mailbox in a certain zip code. Depending on the services, typically you can require that they only be residential addresses. Sometimes you can require that they're only houses. Now that gets a little bit more expensive. In my opinion, it's worth it because I don't really want to mail postcards to apartments, say, or businesses in my local community. I want them sent to houses. Now that's typically the most granular you can get with it. I would love it to be if I could only mail it to homeowners, say, I think that would be better than mailing it to folks that are renting their home, but you can't get that granular. Sometimes you can only get so granular as to say to residential addresses, which you're gonna have to factor that into the cost that, is, that a large percentage of these are gonna go to apartments. Find a local mailing service in your area. The post office technically does it, but I've found better success with local mailing companies in my area. Uh, typically you could probably search EDDM service and then insert you know, Springfield, Missouri or your local market. You'll take the flyer or the brochure that you created in the previous step. Typically they'll have a, uh, a digital editing service that will take that and make it into a postcard size format. Now what I've found works best is a larger postcards. Now there's two sides of postcards. There's a small regular size postcard then there's oversized. You'll pay more for the oversized. I think it's a better value because typically when people are getting mail, when the mail providers are putting these in the mailboxes, 
they will put all the mail inside of the larger one and then rubber band it all together so that your message is on the outside of that pack of mail. It's got a better chance of having somebody look at it before it makes its way to the trash bin. EDDM, it's more expensive. It is effective. We've used it in the past. If I were starting my fence company tomorrow, it is absolutely something I would consider. Guys, what do you think of the list? What would you do differently? I always love hearing back from you guys. I'd love to create a follow-on video with your guys' suggestions. Let me know what works for you in the comments below. All right, guys, for now, Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors, and I'll see you next time.